Welcome everyone to this week's edition of the Extracellular Vesicle Club. This is an event of the International Society for Extracellular Vesicles that we've been holding for almost two years online, uh, so virtually every week. And this week we have a special offering for you um, that's coming to us from the Mayo Clinic in Jacksonville in Florida. Um, and we have two guests, Sunea Ikezu and Yang Yu, who are going to be presenting their work that was recently published in the Journal of Extracellular Vesicles. And we also have a co-moderator today, Alessia Golilobova, who is a postdoctoral researcher at the Johns Hopkins University in my group. Um, so Tunea, Yang, thank you so much for being willing to present your work to us today. I think we have a lot of interest and we're looking forward to hearing about the work and then to discussing it uh, with you. So I'd like to uh, hand the screen sharing now over to you. Yeah, okay. Thank you, uh, Dr. Witter, for the nice introduction. So hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Yang Yo. I'm from Dr. Sunia Ikezu Lab at Mayo Clinic, Florida. So we are pleased to uh, have the opportunity to present our work uh, currently published on Journal of Extracellular Vesicles. Uh, today, we will talk about our uh, results in characterizing the uh, human uh, neuron cell type specific extracellular vesicle proteomics and the disease related uh, EV protein networks in Alzheimer's disease brain. Alzheimer's disease is a neurodegenerative disease which is characterized by the presence of uh, amyloid bed plaque and the neurofibrillary tangles and the severe uh, brain atrophy. AD uh, derives progressively over a long period of time, ranging from abet accumulation to tau mediated uh, neuron dysfunction to complete uh, cognitive uh, impairment. FDA approved drugs can only improve symptoms and slow down progression. So the preclinical prognosis and diagnosis are very important. And I know everybody here is very familiar with EVs. So I will briefly introduce uh, the EVs are small cell derived uh, membrane vesicle, including uh, exosome and uh, micro vesicle. Exosomes are released by fusion of uh, multivesicular bodies with the plasma membrane, while microvesicles are generated by outward budding of the plasma membrane. The EVs carry diverse inter, uh, intracellular cargoes, including proteins, uh, lipids, and uh, nucleic acids, and are involved in intracellular communication in both physiological and pathological conditions. Currently, a number of, of evidence suggests that uh, EVs play a critical role in AD pathology. The AD brain derived EVs are found enriched with oligomeric abet, which was called stand with the EV marker of protein 1, show here. Our recent study also showed the uh, uh, increase of the pathogenic abet 42 level in AD brain derived EV. In addition, we also observed the presence of uh, tau oligomers in AD uh, brain derived EV and uh, phosphorylated tau at serin 396 were significantly higher in AD uh, derived EV than the control EV. So there are assumptions that uh, EVs mediate intracellular communications. Uh, their composition and function may display the uh, cellular function uh, similar to the cell of origin. So uh, in our previous study, we, obse we observed the shift pattern of uh, cell type specific EV proteins uh, during the AD pathogenesis uh, using the brain EV samples and the uh, CSF EV samples. So suggesting that the uh, involvement of cell type specificity in the AD pathology. However, there are still some uh, questions remain to be addressed. First, is there any difference in EV compositions among different brain cells? And which cell type of brain-derived EVs might be enriched during AD pathogenesis? And what would be the potential roles of different cell type specific EVs in AD pathology? Therefore, in this study, we focused on uh, these three aims. So first one, we sought to define human brain cell type specific EV protein signatures, which can distinguish EVs from distinct subsets of brain cells. 
iPSCs are a type of pluripotent stem cells derived from uh, somatic cells, which have been uh, genetically reprogrammed. So iPSC have the ability to self-renew and uh, differentiate into almost all cell types. And we used iPSC to differentiate into uh, excitatory neurons, astrocyte, oligodendrocyte-like cells, microglia-like cells. The pluripotency of iPSC lines was characterized by immunostaining of the stem cell specific marker, including OCT34, nanoc, uh, acrine phosphatase, uh, SSEA4. We validate the differentiated cells by immunostaining of uh, cell type specific markers. So for neuron, we use MAP2 new and synaptophysin. Uh, and uh, for astrocyte, GFAP, we are maintaining uh, APOE were used. For uh, microglia-like cells, GM2, uh, P2RY12 were stemmed. And for oligodendrocyte, uh, the oligodendrocyte marker O4 and myelin basic protein MBP were stemmed. In addition, we also confirmed the differentiated cells by uh, quantitative real-time PCR of the cell type specific uh, genes. We next uh, isolated the cell type specific EVs from the conditioned media by uh, sequential ultracentrifugation and uh, size exclusion clone. The purified EV showed the uh, cap-shaped uh, morphology by transmission electron microscopy. And the EV populations were analyzed by nanoparticle checking analysis. So interestingly, uh, the iPSC astrocyte EV showed a higher EV mean diameter than other three cell types. So likely suggesting the distinct EV population from uh, astrocytes. Uh, we performed the label-free quantitative proteomics of uh, this cell type specific EVs. The equal amount of EV were loaded in SDS page and uh, in gel digestion. And the protein intensity was quantified by label-free intensity based absolute quantification, IBAC method, and normalized by the total intensity of a spiked ADH1 protein. So here we have uh, three biological replicates uh, in our uh, cell type specific EV samples. And the uh, proteins are selected with a peptide and uh, protein uh, FDR less than uh, 1%. We identified 109 for neuron uh, derived EV protein and uh, 197 for microglia like cell derived EV protein. 378 uh, proteins for astrocyte derived EV protein and 117 proteins for oligodendrocyte derived EV protein. And the Venn diagram showed the different distinct uh, EV populations uh, among the four group cell types. And to rule out the uh, potential contaminating proteins uh, in our EV samples, uh, we selected uh, and checked some uh, non-EV markers based on the uh, MISO uh, 2018 guideline uh, in both uh, cell lysate and the EV lysate proteome. So we found uh, the non-EV markers are mostly enriched in the uh, cell lysates rather than EV lysates, uh, suggesting a good uh, quality of the EV population uh, from the iPSA-derived cells. We also checked some common uh, EV markers in the uh, specified cell types. And uh, the iPSC derived astrocyte EV showed the uh, enrichment of all these uh, traditional uh, EV markers. And we uh, compared the EV abundance, uh, abundance to identify uh, cell type specific EV protein signatures. The principal component analysis, the PCA showed a good separation among the different cell types. And the heat map uh, showed the differentially expressed proteins among uh, neuron EV protein, uh, microglia EV protein, astrocyte EV protein, and the oligodendrocyte EV protein by unsupervised hierarchical uh, clustering. We next perform a gene ontology and KGG pathway analysis of these cell type specific EV proteins and found that uh, EV from each cell type uh, represent the uh, cellular function similar to the cell of origin. So for example, the neuron derived EV, uh, in neuron derived EV, so proteins are associated with uh, neuron projection. 
and the proteins in uh, microglia EV are related to uh, immune response. And uh, the proteins in extracellular EV are associated with extracellular matrix, cell adhesion. And uh, the uh, protein from oligodendrocyte derived EV are related to cellular uh, iron ion homostasis. So we then uh, looked into single molecule, which uh, might be used as the potential cell type EV uh, markers uh, for future EV studies. Uh, we defined the most uh, abundant uh, cell type specific EV proteins as log two fold change uh, more than five as compared to the other three cell types. And all of them are significantly enriched over all other, three, all other uh, cell types. And we uh, list some of the uh, cell type specific uh, EV uh, markers. So for example, uh, in the neuron EV, so we identified the neuron cell adhesion molecule, MK1, uh, vesicle associated uh, membrane protein, WAM2, uh, syntaxin 1B as neuron EV uh, specific protein. And the uh, ITGB2, uh, ITGAM, so this is also named uh, cd b and the LCP1 as the microglia specific EV protein, and the uh, APOE ITJ6, LRP1 uh, clustering as astrocyte specific uh, EV protein, and ACP2, LAMP2, uh, FTH1 as oligodendrocyte specific EV protein. And consistently, uh, ITGX6, so we mentioned before, uh, was currently uh, identified as a novel marker of functional and uh, reactive uh, astrocyte. So based on this uh, paper, and uh, FTH1 was found released by oligo oligodendrocyte derived EV shown here to provide the uh, antioxidant uh, def defense function for neurons. So suggesting uh, they are promising uh, cell type specific EV markers. We also try to uh, validate this cell type specific EV markers using a uh, human brain derived EVs isolated from uh, healthy control and AD brains. The human brain derived EVs uh, were isolated by a uh, sucrose gradient centrifugation. And we stand uh, some uh, cell type specific EV marker candidates by immunoblotting. So the total gel outstanding was shown on the left. Uh, in the uh, neuron EV candidates, uh, we used uh, NCAN1, ATP1, A3, and the l can is a uh, recently uh, common used uh, neuron EV markers, uh, but it's uh, blurry here. So uh, ITGAM, uh, LCP1, uh, were stand for maglia EV candidates. ITGA6, uh, LRP1, and the commonly uh, used uh, EAT1, as the astrocyte EV uh, marker candidate. And the LAMP2, FTH1, and the commonly used uh, mock, mock as the oligodendrocyte EV uh, marker candidates. So here is a summary of uh, our study on M1. We investigated the proteomic profile of EVs isolated from uh, human iPSC derived cells. And the novel cell type specific EV protein markers uh, are identified for excitatory neurons, exercise, microglia-like cells, and oligodendrocytes, which might be used for uh, cell type specific EV isolation uh, from human uh, biopsies. We next characterized uh, protein profiles of uh, human brain-derived EV by high-resolution uh, mass spectrometry. So we performed the TMT-labeled uh, high-resolution proteomics uh, of the human brain-derived EVs isolated from uh, 11 healthy control, eight uh, MCI and 11 AD cases. So this work was done uh, with our uh, former lab member, Satoshi. And uh, we used uh, two sets of uh, 16 plex TMT labeling. And an identical sample uh, was used uh, in each uh, set for the result normalization. And in total, we identified uh, 42 86 proteins in uh, both sets. And uh, uh, among them, uh, 26 45 common proteins from the brain derived EVs uh, were used for uh, further proteomic analysis.
So the PCA uh, showed a good separation of a uh, healthy control uh, AD and MCI based on the uh, EV protein uh, abundance. And we identified 242 uh, significantly altered proteins, which are grouped into uh, upregulated proteins and the downregulated proteins in AD uh, using the one-way ONOVA followed by targets uh, post hoc test. And the geo enrichment analysis showed the uh, uh, upregulated proteins, uh, for example, are associated with extracellular metrics, uh, leukocyte migration, transport, and uh, integrin mediated uh, signal pathway, uh, suggesting the higher activity of uh, these processes uh, in AD. And the down regulated proteins are related to DNA damage recognition, protein uh, folding calling uh, denidylation, so which suggests the uh, disruption of these uh, physiological processes in AD. And to narrow down the targeted proteins, uh, we compare the uh, EV abundance among the three groups by using the criteria of uh, Ataki's post hoc test, P uh, less than 0 0.05 and the full change uh, greater than two. We identified 42 uh, uh, differentially expressed uh, proteins uh, here, shown here. And they are uh, disease specific uh, proteins. And uh, the AD uh, specific changes in proteins uh, include MHC2 proteins, uh, including HLA-DRA, HLA-DRB1, HLA, DRB4, and 5. So of, not, of note, the uh, amyloid precursor protein, so APP, was also found uh, specifically increased uh, in ADEV. Meanwhile, the MCI uh, specific changes uh, are proteins associated with uh, oxidative phosphorylation and uh, ATPase family members. So like COX-7C, COX-7A2, and the ATPases, which uh, means the uh, decrease of these uh, proteins in uh, MCI, uh, EV. So these proteins are related to mitochondria function. And here is a summary of our uh, study on M2. Uh, TMT labeled uh, quantitative mass spectrometry revealed 242 significantly altered brain-derived EV proteins among AD, MCI, and controls. And the disease-specific uh, differentially expressed proteins may provide a unique uh, molecular signatures to distinguish EVs isolated from healthy control, MCI, and AD brains. And the last, we investigated a uh, potential cell type uh, EV specificity in Alzheimer's disease. So we apply the waged uh, protein core expression network analysis uh, to construct the ADEV protein modules. So the WPCNA enables to identify modules or groups of uh, proteins and uh, correlate the modules to uh, external information, including the functional enrichment, uh, clinical data, and the cell types. We can also define the key uh, proteins in the interesting modules. So based on our uh, brain EV proteomics, we identified 11 EV protein uh, modules based on the Pearson correlation between a given protein and a given module. A specific uh, GO turn was given to uh, each module. For example, uh, M8 module is associated with a mitochondria. Uh, M1 module is associated with uh, microtubule proteins. And we next correlated these modules uh, to the neuropathological uh, hallmarks of AD, uh, including the cognitive uh, function evaluated by CDR score, the amyloid bed uh, pathology ass assessed by the plaque low, a tau pathology evaluated by the BRAC stage. So the M, uh, we found three modules, uh, M1, M6, M9, were uh, negatively correlated with uh, all these three AD chase. So M1 is related to microtubule. M6, uh, cellular response to the nitrogen starvation. M9, 
is related to glycerol uh, biosynthesis uh, process. So this is consistent with uh, recent findings that uh, the loss of uh, microtubule and uh, the uh, decreased uh, function of metabolic processes uh, in AD. And moreover, we found M7 uh, showed the strongest uh, positively correlation with all this uh, AD trace. And M7 is uh, associated with uh, intrinsic component of the plasma membrane proteins. We next uh, evaluated the cell type enrichment by cross referring the module proteins with lists of uh, cell type specific EV protein markers we identified before. And the significance uh, was ass assessed using the one, one tailed uh, Fisher's exact test and correlated for uh, FDR. So the M11 module uh, showed the nominally significant enrichment in uh, neuron EV markers. And the M4 and the M7 modules uh, show the significant enrichment of astrocyte EV markers uh, even after the FDR cor correction. So uh, previously, we published a protein profile of EVs isolated from interleukin-1 bat uh, stimulated primary astrocyte. So we next asked whether M7 module is also enriched in markers of activated uh, astrocyte-derived EVs. So we uh, integrated the uh, human activated exercise derived EV protein markers into our AD EV uh, proteomes. And we found that M7 uh, also showed enrichment in activated uh, primary exercise EV markers. And the protein protein uh, interaction in M7 uh, demonstrated that the uh, activated exercise EV marker labeled by the yellow. Uh, are tightly uh, interacted with the uh, top 10 key proteins uh, labeled by the large circle in the M7 module. And uh, additionally, uh, we performed uh, ingenuity possible analysis. And these proteins are uh, regulate, regulated by the uh, pro-inflammatory factors, including IL-6, IL-1 bet, tnf alpha, and are involved in the inflammatory processes. So this result suggests that M7 may uh, reflect the EV profile of uh, astrocyte and are important mediators uh, in AD development. So we try to validate the association of one of the hub proteins in M7, uh, ITGB1, with AD pathology. So we uh, purify the astrocyte specific EVs uh, by immunoprecipitation from total brain derived EVs using antibodies against uh, astrocyte EV uh, markers, LRP1 and EA81. So the, ITG, the astrocyte EV marker, ITG6, EA81, LRP1, uh, as well as the common EV marker, CD9, were present in the IP EV samples, suggesting a successful immunoprecipitation of the astrocyte-specific EVs from uh, brain-derived total EVs. And we found the increase, increased uh, level of uh, ITGB1 in astrocyte specific EVs from AD than that uh, from the healthy control. So interestingly, uh, we also find the decrease of LRP1 in astrocyte specific EV uh, in AD uh, EV samples, uh, likely suggesting the reduction of astrocytic LRP1 uh, expression. So uh, integrins are involved in uh, EV uptake by recipient cells for internalization. Uh, our previous study using uh, RGD peptide, so this is a pan uh, integrin inhibitor to block in uh, integrins in astrocyte derived uh, extracellular vesicle. We incubated the uh, uh, control EV and uh, the RGD peptide treated uh, AD EV. So both of them are labeled by PKH. And we uh, found that uh, suppression of the integrins in AD EVs uh, inhibited the neuronal uh, cellular uptake. So show here. And this is the statistic analysis. And here are the movies of neuron uh, uptake of uh, AD EVs over three days. So this res uh, result provide uh, 
further insights into how IDGB1 or other integrins might uh, function in uh, disease progression. So in AD, uh, maybe more EVs can be uptaken by recipient cells due to IDGB1 or other uh, cell surface marker upregulation. And here is the summary of our, M, our study on M3. We generated AD-related EV protein core expression network and found a protein module enriched in astrocyte-specific EV markers was most uh, significantly associated with AD pathology and cognitive impairment. We validated a hub protein from this module, uh, integrating BAT1, ITGB1, was evaluated in AD astrocyte-specific EVs uh, purified from total brain EVs in ind independent cohorts. So about our uh, fundings uh, in this study, for future directions, uh, we are planning to characterize uh, cell type specific EVs from human biospecimen to search for the biomarkers in AD or other neurodegenerative diseases. And uh, de to determine the uh, disease specific uh, cell type specific EV proteins in neurodegenerative disorder and investigate the underlying mechanisms of uh, cell type specific EVs in AD pathogenesis, which uh, show here. So at the end, I'd like to uh, thank Dr. Ikezu uh, and our other lab members, as well as our collaborators for supporting this study. So including uh, the University of California group, and the Howard Group for uh, Proteomics Analysis and the uh, University of Massachusetts for the label-free proteomics. And we uh, get the, uh, our brains from these uh, brain banks. Great, thank you. We have a few questions in the chat box uh, that some of them already answered, but let me read the questions and let me unmute, uh, hello and mute you. So if people will have like follow-up questions or something like this, uh, we can always discuss. So the first question was from Eris. Uh, what method would you use for measure amyloid beta and p tau and EVs? And did you compare it to the CSF level? Eris, do you have any like follow-up questions? Yeah, yeah I, I, I just wanted to say that I was curious because uh, different people, including myself, found different levels of uh, amyloid beta and phosphatau inside exosomes versus outside of exosomes. So I was curious, uh, what is your experience with it? If most of the A beta and most of the phosphatau that you find are inside the exosomes versus free yeah. and, and your experience with measuring them. Yeah, so thank you for the question. Uh, good question. So uh, we measured the uh, amyloid beta and p tau in EVs uh, by ELISA. Uh, so in our previous uh, publication, uh, we identified the amyloid uh, 42 and the PT. Uh, we only detect uh, serine uh, 396 uh, in EVs from ELISA. So other uh, PTAL, uh, I, I don't think we can uh, detect uh, by the ELISA. But yes, uh, the tau, uh, we also uh, performed uh, PK digestion and to confirm uh, some of the tau are actually uh, in the EVs. So we we cannot rule out uh, they are tau uh, in the ex ex outside of the EV, but uh, many of them are actually inside of the EV. Great. Uh, I will read the question from Connor, but Connor, feel free to unmute for follow up. Why did you pellet small EVs for 20 hours when most publication pellet uh, as small EVs for significantly less time? Yeah, yeah. So actually, so this is our uh, starting protocol. So. We just stick to our uh, starting protocol. Uh, so when it, uh, we developed two or three years ago, uh, we used we keep the consistent and the using the twenty uh, hours to isolate uh, the EVs. Yeah, I know now uh, people are using uh, one hour and ten minutes to ultra uh, centrifugate EV. Yes. Great, um, Lindsay. I have a question about. Uh, um, how many EVs are you needed for proteomics, not based on protein content, but the particle number? Uh, you mean the EV amount? 
Yes. New amount. So Vincent, do you have a follow up or can you? Yeah. So did you need like, you know, 10 to the 10th particles or? Yes. 10? Yeah. Yes. You needed uh, 10 to the 10th for proteomics? Yeah. Okay. Uh, for the for the label free proteomics uh, from the cutter cells, we used uh, five micrograms because uh, we know the uh, EVs from conditioned media are really uh, limited. So we used uh, five micrograms. And I think they are from 10, maybe not to 10, 10, uh, 10, 9 to 10, 10, uh, the range 10, 9 to 10, 10. But for the uh, human uh, brain derived EVs, uh, we have a lot of EV. So we subject, I think, 20 micrograms for the brain. Great, thank you. Comics. Yes. Uh, the next twist question about the presence of tetraspanians and the difference in expression. Uh, how do you explain the difference in the presence of the tetraspanians? Yeah, so that's a good question. So because we know uh, there are many uh, different EV sub uh, subset, subtypes uh, are identified uh, in recent uh, publications or studies. So we are thinking the different uh, expression of tetraspanians or the common uh, EV markers may uh, present the distinct uh, EV subtypes in uh, different uh, EV samples. Great. And the next two questions will be from Ola. Ola, would you like to unmute because you have like two questions? Right. Hi. Thank you so much for, for uh, giving this talk. It's really informative. Um, so first question, I think it has been answered already by Ikezo, uh, but um, I was wondering about the photomics platform and you already answered that. But um, apparently like you, you wanna, you're doing this study to actually um, move forward uh, into clinics. So have you thought about any commercially available platforms like Olink or Somologic, or would you consider to uh, put up together uh, specific markers, biomarkers for uh, the study, that, like, you know, to see the differences between that um, uh, disease and then controls? Um, and patients. So that's my question. Thank you so much. Wonderful talk. Thank you. Yeah, thank you so much. Yeah. So as we uh, uh, present in the uh, future directions, yes. So we have two parts. So first part, we identify the cell type specific EV uh, mark candidates. So that part, uh, we are planning to uh, derive some of the uh, cell type specific uh, EV marker to isolate, uh, for example, neuron EV, exercise EV uh, from the uh, CSF or plasma samples and search for the biomarkers in uh, neurodegenerative disease. And uh, we also identified the uh, different expressed uh, UV proteins in uh, AD, uh, MCI and the control. So yeah, we are also thinking to uh, replicate in uh, some independent cohorts to search for the biomarkers for this uh, disease. Yes. Yeah, uh, I can add to, to uh, Jan's answer. So the, regarding the uh, O-Link, I think uh, Dr. Lin Puriam at UCSF successfully used that, used it for neuron derived exosomes, and I think she, she has publication already. Uh, the serologic, uh, the kit is designed to, you know, for the serum, uh, and then they requested 250 micrograms of serum for one experiment. So we are, you know, uh, contacting the company whether it can be applicable to this uh, very tiny amount of the EV for, for our purposes or not. So that's the, under the process. But all in, I think it's a feasible application. Thank you so much. It's wonderful. Thank you. OK, and the next question will be about uh, the differences on EVs uh, between males and females. Have you investigated uh, this? Yeah, yeah, that, that's a good question. Because uh, cell differences, we know cell differences uh, in the uh, AD or other uh, neurodegenerative disorders. But uh, for the, in the EV part, uh, I don't see too much studies on uh, sex differences. So uh, actually, we didn't uh, look into the sex differences in EV protein profiles. Um, but uh, that's a good uh, direction we will see uh, in the future. Yes, that will be interesting. Great, thank you. And next question about BD, uh, uh, brain derived EVs. Uh, Tanina, would you like to unmute and ask your question? 
think it's someone for the presentation of the Greek work. So I was wondering um, regarding your uh, immunoprecipitation of brain derived EVs using astrocyte markers. Yeah. Uh, you said like in your pipeline that you're using either the uh, specific antibody uh, for astrocyte or an isotype control. But then when you showed the Western blot, I, perhaps I missed it, but I, I don't think I saw the isotype control included in the experiment. So I was just wondering if this is something that you've done on the side and what was the outcome? Like how much of the specific findings did you saw with the uh, IgG control comparing to your specific antibody? Yeah, so we uh, did IgG control. So uh, in the Western blot, we also show, and uh, there is, uh, very thin band uh, in the IgG control uh, IP samples. So, so we suppose uh, the uh, astrocyte uh, specific EVs were precipitated by using the this uh, astrocyte EV uh, markers. Yes. Okay, and as a follow up question, um, so um, comparing to your bulk EV, your total EV. Uh, how much do you think uh, display the astrocyte markers? Is this a 1% event, a 10% event, or um, like, can you speculate on that? Uh, so you mean how much astrocyte uh, population from the total brain Yeah, EV? exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's a good question. Uh, from my uh, knowledge, uh, I think it, so because uh, astrocyte is abundant in uh, brains, so from my uh, knowledge, maybe uh, based on the uh, population of astrocyte uh, cells itself, so that EV might be uh, 30 to 40% uh, of from the total EV. We haven't confirmed actually, uh, we actually confirmed the neuron uh, specific EV uh, in our, uh, in our uh, recent uh, study. And how yeah. much was the neuron then? For the neuron, uh, we found uh, 20 to 25% from the total EV, yes. Thank you. Yeah, thank you for the question. Great, thank you. We have two questions from Aurele. Uh, would you like to mute and um, ask the questions? Yeah, I was just curious. Uh, I had very methodological questions. I was just curious of how much EV you load when you run a Western blot. Yeah. And yeah. the next question would be about uh, the variability you see when you run, for example, the same uh, brain derived EV, mm -hmm. like when you run that through your downstream applications. Mm -hmm. I was curious about how much, um, how is it reproducible in other mm -hmm. worlds? Yeah. So, yeah, a good question. Uh, because it's uh, always a challenge to uh, do the Western broad of the EV samples. So in our uh, brain derived EV, we load five uh, microgram uh, brain EVs and uh, uh, check the uh, cell type specific EV markers. Uh, the variability, uh, I will say uh, not too much variability uh, in our brain EV samples, uh, but uh, in some uh, different cases. So because the people the individuals have a uh, variability. So in uh, maybe in some, in one or two of the, our uh, uh, cases, maybe we can see a very high enrichment of one of the uh, EV markers or, or low expression of these EV markers. But overall, I think it's uh, consistent. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. And the next questions, uh from Yong Zhang. Would you like to mute? Yeah, this is Yong. Uh, great work and presentation. Congratulations and very nice publication. I actually reviewed it. Um, I really learned a lot from it. So I just a couple of questions, you know, because uh, I've been working with the diagnosis of, of the EV. <clears throat> and mm -hmm. so the biomarkers that you identify from the proteomics or for example, integrins are you know, commonly yeah. expressed in other tissues and then uh, can be found actually uh, to be overexpressed in different diseases. So I was wondering if we could be uh, comment on the specificity of the biomarkers, not just the uh, integrins, but other things that you, uh, the, the module seven that you identify, right? Really, really strongly uh, yes. associated with the ID. You know, in terms of the uh, um, the diagnostic value for AD versus other disease. 
Yes. Okay. Thank you for the question. Yes. So the integrins, yeah, actually are abundantly expressed in uh, other tissues. So uh, for the uh, specificity of biomarkers, uh, maybe uh, we have to combine uh, some of these uh, EV proteins, uh, not only focus on one as the, uh, for the AD specific uh, diagnosis uh, versus other diseases, but uh, uh, we need uh, other uh, replications uh, in different cohorts to validate our uh, UV marker combinations for the biomarker in AD. Great, and I think Tanina has another follow-up question. Tanina, would you like to ask your questions? Yeah, just if the time allows it. Um, I was wondering, uh, scale on the immunoprecipitation of the brain-derived EVs, uh, what are the ratios between these oh. and EVs that you yeah. use? And yeah. um, if you performed any uh, antibody to creation um, on that regard too, because this may affect yeah. the results in the outcome. Yeah, yeah, that's a good question. So for uh, bees, we use the uh, Dynamis uh, Expoaxi bees, I remember. And based on the uh, protocol, I remember, uh, so we first conjugate the uh, uh, dynamic bees to antibodies, and then uh, we used uh, we used 30, 30 microgram uh, brand-derived EVs. Uh, I think in five, I don't remember exactly, five uh, microgram, five microgram bees, yes. So 30 to uh, 50 microgram uh, EV samples to five uh, milligram, milligram bees. So uh, yeah, according to the, uh, the protocols of this uh, dynamic bees. I think there's and, a, a hands raised from the uh, Ms. Basakiri. Yes, thank you. You you said it right, even though it's a oh. long big name, but thank you. Uh, very nice talk, uh, very impressive. Thank you so much. I have a question, maybe you already uh, answered this, uh, something similar. So you mentioned about the phosphorylated tau uh, in the AV. So what is the percentage of the free-floating phosphorylated tau in the CSF compared to the um, EVs? Yeah, uh, actually, we haven't compare, compare it. Uh, mm -hmm. But in our recent project, uh, we are trying to uh, evaluate uh, the uh, p tau in CSF compared with the p tau in EV mm -hmm. uh, to see uh, which one may be more sensitive to detect p tau. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, so we, I, I didn't know the answer oh, currently, okay. but yeah, because, we are trying to get uh, it. Thank yeah. you, because my, my thinking is. Uh, you know, uh, if we are talking about a diagnostic test for yes. uh, Alzheimer's disease of, or for any type of disease, uh, we have to uh, make sure we have always to compare whatever we find, the free floating, what we see in the CFCF and uh, what it is in babies. And if it's worth it, and as I said, for a diagnostic test, uh, it's not easy to do, to precipitate EVs, to do all this type of work in a diagnostic lab, you know, as a routine thing. So we always have to compare the free floating stuff in the CSF and if it's yeah. worth to go to uh, EV isolation and characterization. Yes, yes, thank, thank you. you. Yeah, uh, uh, just, just to follow up your uh, uh, questions, uh, I agree that there's a, a lot of progress in uh, a CSS biomarker with a free tau. Uh, our recent another study published in Brain showed that the when you inject this equal amount of tau in the EB form or the fibrillar form or liver form, uh, there's a, a, a lot of uh, the tau EB form is much more efficient in spreading tau pathology in the brain as compared to the soluble tau form in, in either oligoma or fibrillar form. So in, in the context of the uh, potency of the disease spread, I think uh, in the characterization of the uh, EB tau is more relevant to understand the disease progression. Although biomarker standpoint, soluble tau is also equally important. 
Yes, yes, I agree. If you want to study the pathophysiology of disease and how the disease is spreading, which is a big unknown in Alzheimer's disease, definitely we have to uh, study all this, uh, uh, the form of, of uh, tau, phosphorylated tau in inhibition and not. But I was just asking about specifically about the diagnostic test yeah. and uh, how easy it is and the specificity and uh, uh, how valuable it is going to be. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Great. We don't have questions in the chat box, but I do have a question about L1 com. Uh, you showed the L1 com on IPCs neuron uh, by Western blood, but have you identified uh, by proteomics? Yeah, that's a great question. So we also uh, look into L1 cam uh, in our proteomics data. Uh, so unfortunately, we didn't find uh, L1 cam uh, either in our neuron uh, derived EV, uh, IPSC neuron derived EV as well as uh, the, uh, I think the brain derived EV, we also didn't uh, find the L1 cam. So that's why um, we are trying to uh, find some other uh, reliable uh, neuron uh, specific uh, EV markers for uh, future uh, EV studies. Yes, we know, yeah, there are many uh, controversial studies based on the L1 cam, yeah. And now it's a lot of uh, debate, uh, yes. Okay, great. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, any other questions for our speakers today? Well, there's so much to do in the future with the wonderful reagents you have here. Yeah, I agree. So, Thank you. So the, the uh, presentation was extraordinarily clear uh, of all the steps. So, yeah, thank you so much. I think eventually we'd like to know about the microRNA, the, the RNAs, Mm -hmm. say and yes. uh beyond that you're testing the uh, uh the ability of these cell specific evs mm -hmm. to affect certain target cells and the step after that is the ev that the target cell produces uh, for the network um becomes more possible with, with these wonderful reagents. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, so that's uh, one of our aim to do this study because currently we don't have a cell type specific EV uh, marker markers. Uh, we all have the cell type proteins to construct our uh, uh, EV modules. So here we want to uh, investigate the cell type EV uh, markers and we can construct uh, uh, any other uh, EV proteomics based on the cell type EV uh, mm -hmm. markers. Yes. There's so much, so much to do. It will be great fun uh, yeah. to find out all the things you're going to find. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Yeah. So this is only the first step because yes. uh, there are many disease related cell types. So yes. we, are, we are going to identify. Yeah. So now we are just identify the basic. Yes. They'll type you. Yes. So Phil, thank, thank you. you for that. I think that's a wonderful way to conclude today that we can talk about the fun that we're all going to have in following up on some of these exciting discoveries and the many more that are to come. So Yang, thank you for your very clear presentation, um, for all the work that you put in here. And, um, and thank you, uh, Tsunea, also for, um, for sharing this work with us today. We wish the, the, the both of you all the best as you continue this work um, and as you contribute to our understanding of the, the neural cell, cell type specific EVs. Um, so, and thank you everybody for joining and for the, the questions that you've, uh, you've given to us. And Alessia, thank you for moderating today. Um, you've done a great job and we all uh, look forward to seeing you again at a future, uh, hopefully not too far in the future, EV club. Thanks everybody and have a great rest of the week. Thank bye you. Now. Thank yeah, you for thank the you. opportunity, Ken and everybody. Bye-bye. Yeah, bye-bye.